Sustainability and environmental stewardship are important to Alberta's livestock and meat industry. In a three-year project, Dr. David Bressler and a team of researchers from the University of Alberta developed a lipid conversion technology. The project culminated in an Alberta-based startup company that is producing value-added biofuels from rendering operations. For Dr. David Bressler, the mastermind behind this technology, this project was more than a decade in the making. In 2003, I came over to the renewable space. Uh, in a cross appointment with uh, what was Alberta agriculture at the time, looking at ways to create value from agricultural byproduct streams. And the one we started looking at was the rendering industry. So although we looked at protein, we also looked at the oil and or the, actually the fat component uh, from the rendering industry. Throughout that time, Dr. Bressler applied knowledge gained while working in the oil industry. Through that application, Dr. Bressler came across an unexpected breakthrough that helped catalyze the lipid to hydrocarbon project. When we started out, we didn't know if we could decouple and have the two reactions we wanted to have and not the two we didn't want, and could we find the right regime. So when I started out, there was colleagues in engineering that were like, Dave, it's not gonna work. I don't think you could decouple them. So then after a couple of years, we had it working. We went back and said, hey, you know, we got it working. Do you wanna help us, you know, talk about equipment designs? And then all of a sudden, everybody's really excited. So that was the big, big leap of faith. With researchers and engineers on board and funding in place from the federal and provincial governments, as well as from Alberta Innovates Biosolutions, a proof of concept was developed. With proof in hand, Dr. Bressler received support from the Alberta Livestock and Meat Agency, or ALMA, and others, which led to the transition from the lab to a full-scale pilot project through startup company Forge Hydrocarbons. Um, about that point, really the Alberta Livestock and Meat Agency, or ALMA, stepped in and, and really kind of led the charge to help us get to the next scale. And so between funding of Alberta Livestock Meat Agency, uh, Western Economic Diversification, and Forge Hydrocarbons at the time stepped in to help match, we were able to build the pilot plant that you see here today. As an entrepreneur and owner of BioX, and now CEO of Forge Hydrocarbons, Tim Haig was attracted to Dr. Bressler's cost-effective biofuel concept. What would attract me to this technology is it, I was looking for a technology that could make a renewable diesel molecule and not use catalysts and not do, use hydrogen, and that's what we have here. With support throughout the entire process, from developing the proof of concept through to the development of a new company, it truly took a whole community to get the technology to its present stage. So between the students, the government, the university, the city of Edmonton, uh, the Alberta Innovates Energy and Environmental Solutions funds this uh, advanced energy research facility that we've been able to house the plant at for the last three years. It's a whole community build to get to this stage right now. Now in its second year, Forge Hydrocarbons is confident the lipids to hydrocarbons, or LTH technology, is a success. Neil Van Notzenberg, Vice President at Forge Hydrocarbons, explains the LTH process. The first step in the technology is the hydrolysis. And this is, um, this is our pilot scale hydrolysis system. It is a 20 liter batch system. The goal in the first stage is to take the feedstocks or rendered oils and fats and convert them from a low level free fatty acid to a high level free fatty acid product by removing the carbon dioxide molecule, which has no energy value. The next step is the pyrolysis stage. We call this the pyrolysis reactor and this is basically a high temperature, um, a high pressure reactor that we um, take our raw feedstock that we've uh, hydrolyzed, 100% free fatty acids go into this reactor and under those high temperatures and those pressures we convert those free fatty acids into hydrocarbons. Within a few hours the pyrolysis reactor produces renewable gasoline and diesel and although these products already exist on the market this technology is unique. And this technology produces the same hydrocarbons or the same products that traditional existing technologies do. With the difference and the exception and the uniqueness behind this technology is that we don't use any catalysts, we don't use any hydrogen, and those are the components that really drive the cost and the complexity of converting the free fatty acids into hydrocarbons. 
using primarily oleic acid at input at the pyrolysis stage results in a liquid hydrocarbon product. The final step is a distillation process that separates the hydrocarbons into two unique products. And what we do is we take the output from our pyrolysis, which is the range of liquid hydrocarbons ranging anywhere from C5 to C18. We take our hydrocarbons, we bring them into this distillation system, and we basically distill the product into three ranges. Uh, and primarily are the two product ranges that we're focusing on is the liquid gasoline, or the renewable gasoline phase, and the liquid renewable diesel phase. There are some light ends, um, methane um, that comes off um, the distillation system, but really this system is designed to cut our liquid phase into gasoline and diesel. This multi-patented technology is like a sledgehammer, jokes Bressler, as there is no reliance on a large hydrogen or oxygen plant to crack the molecules. Because it's such a simple uh, mechanism in terms of the chemistry that's happening at high temperature, what happens is there's no catalyst, there's no hydrogen, and so those decarboxylation I was talking about and cracking of the molecules happens just on the molecule itself. We don't re rely on a big hydrogen plant or oxygen plant or any other high capital intensity. By doing that, we're allowed, we can be cost efficient at smaller scales. Without the need for hydrogenation, as in the larger existing hydrogenation processes, this model can maintain itself on a much smaller scale, making it a very cost efficient process. Keeping to a smaller scale has a twofold effect. By going a bit smaller, there's two elements. One, we create a market for this tallows and byproduct streams from the rendering industry, which is great. We also create a high temperature destructive process, which if there was any concerns about mad cow disease, BSE, or, or using the specified risk material, it's a safe disposal method for sure. More importantly, however, is the potential for rural development. A smaller scale allows us to delocalize many plants at rural communities closer to the rendering operations and allowing kind of more of a distributed model for rural development as well. As well, being small scale increases the investment opportunities for smaller local stakeholders. Being capital light means it doesn't just need to be one major refinery for the entire province or Western Canada at a single site. You can look at delocalized models so you can have sites at every source of lipids and scale the plant to be whatever the source is, which allows you to, again, have smaller capital. You can get smaller investor companies licensing and building the plants. It doesn't need to be just an energy major doing that. In its present location, the existing 120-litre module reactor runs 24-7, has the capacity to process 25 litres per hour of throughput. After more than two years of continuous processing, Forge Hydrocarbons is ready to take the collected data and upscale to a pre-commercial design. goal is to run this with different feedstocks and to generate a lot of operational data so that we can take that <clears throat> Um, and look at our mass balance and our yields, take that data, that information, and scale that up to our pre-commercial design, which will be a 5 million gallon plant, or roughly 110 times the size of what you see behind us here. Although there are similar plants in existence, the lipid to hydrocarbon process is a more sustainable model. A direct competitor to this would be um, um, a renewable diesel plant that uses the hydrogen in the catalyst. So this would be much smaller, less complex, uses a lot less energy. Um, there's no need to have another separate plant, hydrogen plant, in the background feeding it. Uh, and there's no need to continue to replace and replenish the, uh, the catalysts that go in. So this is potentially you know, a tenth of the size of what you'd traditionally see, or even smaller. Throughout its development, the LTH technology has demonstrated it is a value-added opportunity for Alberta's livestock industry, which also lends to the industry's sustainability. The livestock industry is going to benefit from having an additional pathway for um, some of their um, products. Um, the products that we can use, uh, the rendered animal fats, the tallows, um, can all be converted into free fatty acids. It can be can be uh, run through our process and converted to hydrocarbons. There are also notable benefits to the environment. But as you can see, the technology um, and the feedstocks that are used to create the hydrocarbons and more importantly, the process that we use to convert have a much lower carbon footprint than the traditional petroleum-based hydrocarbons. The LTH project has also helped further the development of Alberta's research and education community. 
Overall, the LTH technology has helped advance the development of about 15 grad and post-grad students. But the benefits don't stop there. So the research continues. Even though this technology tree has gone to commercialization, there's been lots of offshoot opportunities that we continue to do more research on. And as they scale up, they'll catch up to this technology as well. As well, Forge Hydrocarbons worked with Nate to develop the Institute's renewable energy program and presently has former Nate students working at the pilot plant. And what are the next steps in this success story? We're at a point now where we've got um, good data, good product, good results, and we could take that information and start commercializing, getting into commercial design, and ultimately building a commercial scale or a pre-commercial scale facility so that we can show the world how well this technology is going to work. More importantly, how efficient this technology is and how well it can compete against existing technologies.